Not only do I believe we mostly have agreement on the things we disagree, we can still fellowship with one another. This is Wretched Radio. Social justice, it's rearing its head, at least in my Twittering world. I sent out a couple of tweets. A lot of people very upset with that. And please note, I'm I'm not trying to intentionally upset people. I was simply laying forth what I thought was the biblical response to oppression based on two particular sections of Scripture. It couldn't possibly include nuances, considerations, and thoughts, but a lot of people got very upset with that. And I believe if we would reason together, we would not only discover, as I think we already have, that we've got a lot of agreement on these issues. We're just using, we're all using our words too loosely. We're like 38 special. We're holding on loosely. And and we should hold on a little tightly to de- tighter to definition so that we know what we're talking about. Uh, if I said to you right now, skip it, what what would you do? You maybe pass by something. Maybe maybe you'd maybe you'd start like hopping down the hallway. Skipping. No, we're safe on that one. Okay, you hear you hear the word skip, and it it, it depends on the con. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. What is the shade? The word trunk. We use this in Herman who available at wretched dot org. We you use trunk. What do, if I say get your trunk? What 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 am I talking about? Or go go be near your trunk. Stand what would you do? Elephant. You okay? If you happen to own an elephant, you'd go near the elephant's trunk. Would you go to the rear of your car? Unless, of course, it's a Volkswagen, and I think the trunks are still in front on the old They're... bugs. At any rate, I think some of the fancy sports cars have it that way, too. Or would you go to that shipping container that you inherited from your grandparents? Just think how we could get into an argument over that. When you have one meaning in mind, and I have another meaning in mind, and I think that's precisely what's happening with this social justice debate that we're having— I think the devil, frankly, is being very successful right now in causing a lot of animosity toward one another. This has been the very thing that I personally have been very concerned about from the beginning, that this is being used by Satan himself to put a wedge between believers. Now, do I believe on this issue there can be a wedge? Yes. If you're advocating violence, we got a wedge. If you're advocating that we are supposed to become revolutionaries, we've got a wedge. If you are suggesting that we should set things on fire, uh, that we should we should impede congressmen from getting to their office, we, then we've got a wedge. But I think even on the areas of disagreement that we have, we can live together on these things. Case in point, the Southern Baptist Convention is is very politically involved. Do I think that that is the right thing for that denomination, which is the church, to be doing? Petitioning and getting involved with uh, lobbyists. Uh, Do I I think the church should be doing that? No, I, I don't. Now, do I believe a Southern Baptist can work on those things and go to work for different think tanks, et cetera? Of course. Of course I do. In fact, if you want to be a lobbyist, go ahead and do that too. But but not as, I don't think as a Christian, like I'm, I'm here to tell you what the Bible says about the welfare program. And that's the way we're going to do it. But if you want to be involved in the issue to help people, then you have the, the right to do that. And I personally don't think that it is wise to have the church being represented as a special interest group in Washington, D.C. I disagree. Do I think Al Mohler is a heretic? Of course not. We just have a different take on that issue. And I would hang with Al Mohler any time. He wouldn't hang with me because well, he's just like, well, it's just a different gray matter realm. You know. But I, I love my brothers and sisters in the Southern Baptist Convention. Do you see how I think there's been so much confusion on the definition of words and how we go about doing it. Ben Shapiro and John MacArthur had a conversation recently, and they got into this subject. And I think you're going to hear this, and you're going to— some of it I think you might agree with, some of it you might not agree with. But none of it should cause a massive division amongst us. What do you think the relationship should be between 
folks who are in the business of, of religion and trying to inform people about religion and politics? How often should they be speaking about politics? Should they be doing so openly or just preaching values? Uh, my calling, my, my mandate, the, the command from heaven to me is to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. That's the message that I am committed and mandated by God to preach. That doesn't mean I avoid everything political because I also want to do anything I can to elevate justice and righteousness in the world. Catch that? Now, I'm not telling you that that's easy to do. And I'm not telling you that we're all going to have agreement every single step of the way. But I think that we can see some definite lines not anarchy, not violence, not revolution, not animosity toward a people group who perhaps has more stuff. We can debate the words privilege and advantage and all of those things, but regardless, I'm talking about the Christian response is not anarchy. It's not busting the system. You work with the system if you choose to and seek justice. That's fine. We're, we're, we're just not going to become terrorists or anarchists or revolutionaries or the people that the government has to go, uh-oh, we got a problem with that group. And so as a Christian, I want to take responsibility for whatever political avenues that I can go down that are going to increase the order of society, the blessing of society. I want to be pro-family, pro-life, uh, pro-character, pro-virtue, pro-morality. Um, that that's mandated to me as well. Uh, I am to, I, I'm to be a citizen who submits to the powers that be. We don't start revolutions. We submit to the powers that be, and we work to change the culture from the inside, one soul at a time. Uh, do we have agreement? Yeah, I, I, I'm almost certain. We'd, okay, I can't hear you, but I suspect that we do. I, w yes, regarding justice. No regarding anarchy. No regarding seeing it set up as my, my, the church's job is to overthrow a system. It's not. Now, I think of, it particularly, there, there was a fellow who was a very smart guy. I'm just going to keep his name out of it because you, you might actually know who it is, who responded to the tweets that I had sent out. And he, he wasn't at all happy with what I said, that the response of the Christian is not to overthrow the system. He's been working very hard to deal with churches that are covering up sexual abuse. And he understood that my statement of not fighting against injustice, tearing down the oppressor meant we shouldn't care about those issues or be involved in those issues. That's not at all what I suggested. We have regularly here talked about the issue of sexual abuse in the church. We regularly talk about the issue of abortion. I, I have to confess to you, we don't often talk about the issue of racism. And the, really the only reason for that probably is, is because in, in my world, it's, it's just not something I'm confronted with very often. They, it's not for any other reason than top of mind. Uh, but we do talk about these issues. We don't want children being molested. We've made this perfectly clear. If somebody is abusive and somebody in the church finds out about it, you don't call the pastor first. You call the police. Now, we agree on that. But I don't think that that's Marxian social justice. Do you see how... We agree on that. And if, and if I said to you, that's what social justice is, I, I think that you and I would agree. Because our definitions and understanding of social justice are just plain different. John MacArthur and Ben Shapiro continuing their conversation. A lot of the issues that you talk about are inherently political. They may not have been political 50 years ago, but when you say pro-life, pro-family, uh, pro-religion... Uh, these actually do have real-world consequences in the world of politics. Yeah, it was a little different 50 years ago when we might have been talking about some sort of social structure and economics. We're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about morality now. We're talking about whether we kill babies or don't kill babies. We're talking about what is marriage. We're talking about what is a family. What, what is male? What is female? Uh, that, that, those are the issues now that have made their way into the political world so that it's fraught 
with moral issues. And if you are one who has a moral authority, which would be the word of the living God, the creator, then your responsibility in any society is to make sure that God's moral standards are heard. Are heard, not imposed. Do we agree? No theocracy? Do we, do we, do we agree with that? That we are not going to try to turn America into ancient Israel? Of course we do. I mean, well, maybe there's some folks who wouldn't agree in that. But I think overall we do, don't we? And even if we don't, you're not a heretic. I'm not a heretic. Let's work through this stuff. And I suspect that the father of lies is at the root of the disagreements, dissensions, some animosity, some name-calling, all because of a lack of understanding and agreement on words come let us reason together this is wretched radio 